What's up everybody, I'm not a software engineer. We are going to pick up right where I left off from the previous video, and that is basically what you see right here. Uh, we have a mostly working Plinko game. There are a couple issues, and one of the glaring issues just appeared, and that was that one of the balls actually flew out of the playing field. So what we're going to go ahead and do is close this and immediately start creating an invisible wall on the left and the right side. And we're also going to create one that goes from this top point here upwards, uh, and then this right top point here going upwards as well. And so that's going to be like this invisible barrier that prevents... Uh, the balls from actually going out of bounds. So let's go ahead and bring up our VS Code window. And we will head over to the board.py file. So I'm going to go ahead and basically modify this giant block of code here. And we're going to update that to reflect our segments. But that means that we need to get a couple of points for our segments. And so I'm going to go ahead and start with getting the second point for segment A. And you'll see why that is in just a moment. But I'm going to put a comment, get second point for segment A. And the way that I'm going to do that is set self.segment A2 to obstacle start. And uh, the reason that I'm doing that is because basically the point for obstacle start is our first obstacle, which is that uh, top left that you see when we look at this board. It's this right here, which means that, that since this is point two out of our segment points, right, then this needs to be point one. So we're going to go ahead and get that uh, for segment A here in just a moment. Prior to doing that, however, we're going to get the first point for segment B. And the reason that I say that is because it is simply right here, right? So this would be segment B's first point. So going back to the code, we can basically add something within our for loop. And that will simply be, uh, I'm going to add a comment as well, get first point for segment B. And then I'm going to have an if statement, if self dot cur row count equals three and self updated chords x value, uh, which is the zeroth element of updated chords, is greater than obstacle start at index zero plus the obstacle pad. Make sure that that is right, and it is. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and get self.segment B.1. Uh, and that is just going to be self.updated chords. And uh, so we basically need to do this for the first point of segment A as well. So I'll have an elif self.cur row count equals self.final row count and i is equal to zero. And I will add a comment here as well. It says get first point for segment A. And in the case that those statements are true, then we were self.segment A1 and set that to self.updated chords. And then finally, we'll have an LF self cur row count equals self.final row count. And I is equal to self.cur row count minus one. We will get our self.segment B2, and that will just be self.updated chords. And I'll just add the comment there as well. Get second point for segment B. Cool. So we also need to get similar coordinates for our multipliers, um, and that can basically happen at the end of this block here, right? Because once we create all of our obstacles, we're going to basically be at this position. And so the way that we can do that is by just adding self.multi x and self.multi y and set that to self.updated chords plus the obstacle pad. That will be the x value and the y value will be self.updated chords and the y value will just remain the same. So we'll just reference the first element of self.updated chords. I'll go ahead and save that. So we need to spawn our segments now that we have our points. And uh, we can go ahead and do that here. Segments or boundaries on side of obstacles. And we will basically declare this um, by calling a function, which we have yet to create. Uh, but that's just going to be self.spawn segments. 
And so we're going to add some points there, which will be self.segment A1 and self.segment A2. And the place that we're going to spawn the segment is going to be self.space. Similar to that, we're going to do a self.spawn segments, self.segment B1 and self.segment B2. Again, in self.space. And we need segments at top of obstacles. So we already have these points essentially, right? We know that this one right here and this one right here are both going to go up to their same X value, but a Y value of zero. Um, so we can basically say self.spawn segments. And this uh, is going to be an interesting X value, but we're basically just going to leverage self.segment A2 at index zero and then zero. Uh, and then we're also going to have the second uh, point of the segment be self.segment A2. And this will be in self.space. And then we'll also have a self.space, self.spawn segments, self.segment B1. And then we'll have self.segment B1 index 0. And then a Y value of 0. And again, in self.space. So after this, we do need to call our self.spawn multis, uh, which we will create in a second, but I'm just gonna put this here for now. Spawn multis, self.spawn multis. And uh, I'm gonna comment this out for the time being. But now it is time to actually create our spawn segments function. So I'm gonna do that right above update, and we'll just have def spawn segments self and so we're going to have our points right a point a and a point b and then we also need to know the space that the segments will be in and so i'm going to have a body and a shape and then i'm basically going to add them to the space so there's just three lines here and that's going to be segment body that's going to be pymonk.body and the body type will be a pymonk.body.static since it will not move and then I'm going to create a segment shape, and that will be pymonk.segment. So there is actually a segment um, in pymonk, and uh, that's just going to be segment body, and then our point A, point B, and then our radius, which really doesn't matter a whole lot. But I am going to set that to 5 and make a note that the radius is equal to 5. And finally, we'll add that to the space self.space.add segment underscore body and segment underscore shape. And uh, that should actually cover the creation of our invisible segments. So I can go ahead and rerun this. And we do have an error at line 38. And the indentation for this entire block was off. So we'll go ahead and indent that and try again. So now, really the only way to test this is to spam the uh, click button over and over and over again on the mouse. And it's going to become obvious eventually that none of the balls are actually escaping the boundaries, which is basically what we aim to do. Now I could have colored the segment just so we could have seen where it was drawn. Um, but since I actually did this in testing, I am fairly confident that we won't have any issues uh, with the board not having the boundary on the left and right and top of the board. All right, so looking at our reference picture again, we see that there is kind of this line of multipliers at the bottom. If we actually count this out, it is 8, 8, and 1, so that is 17, which makes sense because there are 18 obstacles at the bottom and thus there would be 17 spaces where each of these multis actually go. So we're gonna jump right into the code and we're going to create the spawn multis function. And in order to do that, I am going to place a new function right above spawn obstacles and I will just start that off by saying def spawn multis. And that will simply take in self as an input parameter. 
So we want to have a similar like cascading RGB values uh, to the reference image that we just saw. And so we can reference settings in order to do that. And I've already pre-filled this because typing this in would be painful. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and basically say self.multi amounts are equal to, and right now I'm just going to reference the amounts, I'll reference the RGB vowels in the next line, but this one is just going to be val1 for val in multi RGB dot keys. And uh, then I'm basically going to have a similar line that says self dot RGB vowels, and that will be val for val in multi RGB dot values. And so this gets our amounts and our RGB values for everything that is found in this multi RGB dictionary here. And so now what I can do is have a for loop that just says for i in range num multis, which again is in our settings.py file, I can have um, basically an object of the multi class multi equals multi. And uh, then I'm going to pass a few parameters self.multi x, which we created earlier, and self.multi y. Um, and then I'm going to have self.rgb vals at index i. And finally, self.multi amounts at index i as well. And then I'm going to add this to our multi group multi underscore group dot add multi. And finally, we're going to add our obstacle pad to the x value uh, of self.multi, which is uh, stored in self.multi underscore x plus equals obstacle pad. And so basically, when I spawn this, I should start at that initial value and then add the pad every single time we go until we have our number of multis. And uh, since I am calling this here, I should be able to run this again. Except the only problem is we don't have anything in our multi class. So if I were to load this up, you see that uh, there is no class multi just yet. So that is something that we have to go ahead and create before I run this. So in order to start filling this out, we're going to have from settings import star, and then I'm going to have import pygame pygame dot graphics draw g f x d r a w and that is going to help us with our animations of the obstacles and graphics draw allows us to set the alpha value um, for specific sprites um, so i use that sometimes when drawing sprites but in any case i'm going to have a few things that happen before we start filling out our class multi and and so I'm going to add a comment that just says sprite for multipliers beneath obstacles. And this is going to be where we declare our multi group. And we're just going to have that be a pygame.sprite.group. And then I'm going to have a delta time object here as well. So clock equals pygame.time.clock. And then delta time will be equal to clock dot tick and then our frame rate divided by 1000 and so now we can go ahead and start filling in our class multi which is going to inherit from the pygame dot sprite dot sprite class um, we're gonna have a init function that takes in a couple of things def init will take in self as a parameter position color and multi amount because we need to actually have some information to print to the multis. And uh, since we are inheriting from a different class, we do need the super uh, init as well. And so I'm just going to get a display surface object as usual. Self.display surface is going to be equal to pygame.display.get surface. And I need a font as well. So self.font will be pygame.font.sysfont, none. And then 26 will be the font size. I'm then going to get my self.color as color. My self.border radius will be 10. I'll explain that in a bit. Self.position will be set to position. Then I'm going to create a rectangle. And uh, we're going to have basically two things that we care about for this rectangle, the width and the height. So that will be self.rect width and self.rect height. 
and that will be set to obstacle pad minus obstacle pad divided by 14 and multi height and this is just the uh, basically the sizing that I wanted for the rectangle that we use for the multis then I can have self dot image set to pygame dot surface self dot rect width and self dot rect height and uh, that will be pygame dot src alpha as a parameter as well there so now we can actually draw this pygame dot draw dot rect self dot image self dot color self dot image dot get rect and our border radius will be set to self dot border radius then I will create the actual rectangle with self dot rect equals self dot image dot get rect in the center will be our position and I will then have uh, our multi amount set to the multi amount parameter that we take in when creating the class or an object of the class rather and I'm also going to set a size for the previous multi and so when we go back over here we see that this gets printed on the side um, not to be confused with this because those are going to be two separate classes but I am going to put the size of this here and that is self.prev multi which don't ask how I got this size but this is what I found worked the best with divided by 21.3 now you don't have to use that exact number but this is what I thought looked good so we do have a few things related to animation animation stuff frame rate independent um, so I can basically have our animated frames um, and these are going to be used in our animation self dot animated frames equals zero we'll have that set to zero this is kind of like a counter and we'll have self dot animation frames and that's going to be basically how long we want the animation to last and in this case 0 0.25 seconds divided by delta time uh, will give us the amount of frames that we need to animate uh, and then I'm gonna have a boolean self dot is animating and that will be set to false and finally we want to render the text onto our multis um, so we actually know the amount of the multiplier on each multiplier rect and we're gonna have a basically draw multiplier amount on rectangle and that will just be self dot render multi and that does not actually exist just yet um, but I'm gonna go ahead and create that function and here's another indentation error so forgive me on that and so I can go here and say def render multi and uh, I'm basically going to have a text surface, a text rectangle, and then I'm going to blit that to, or I'm going to blit the rectangle to the surface, right? So text surface will be set to self.font.render, and I'm going to have an F string here. That is basically just the self.multi amount. And then I'm going to have an X as well, so you can just see that it's a multiplier, right? And then I'm going to have true, um, and finally, zero 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 as the RGB value which is black I'm not sure what this true signifies if I'm being 100% honest but then I'm gonna create the rectangle text underscore rect equals text surface dot get rect and the center is going to be self dot image dot get rect dot center and then finally self dot image dot blit text surface text rectangle and there we go so with a little luck I should be able to actually run this and I have an error because I forgot an equal sign here and I don't actually see the multis so something is clearly amiss let's go ahead and troubleshoot I believe I need to update this somewhere um, I don't think I'm doing that in board just yet so I need to go back over to board and there we go there's nothing about the multi group here just yet so I need multi group 
dot draw and then I'm gonna draw everything in the multi group on my self dot display surface and then I'm also going to update or call the update function multi group dot update and now let's try that again And there we go. So if I were to play the game now, you might expect something to happen, but nothing does because we don't have any logic for when the balls actually cross the multipliers. And what you would imagine is that, you know, maybe the ball will hit the multiplier and then you'll see your score or whatever, or you'll have some type of reference that tells you that you actually scored that multiplier, right? Um, and so, we basically need to code that in and uh, the way that I'm going to basically do that is look for collisions between the ball and the multiplier and when we have those then we need to capture some information about the actual multiplier that the collision occurs in. So let's take a look at how we might implement that. Recall that ball.py does have an update function and right now there's not really a whole lot going on in that update function. But basically it kind of makes sense to check to see if the ball sprite is actually colliding with something in our multi-group, right? And if it is, then we know that essentially there has been a score. And so I can add kind of a new little section here. We know that we're going to draw the ball. I'm going to put that at the bottom. And I'm going to create a new section here that basically is going to check to see if ball hits multi. And so what I'm going to do is iterate through multi in our multi group. So for multi in multi group. And now I'm going to check if pygame.sprite.colliderect. You may have guessed this. The parameters for colliderect to take in two rectangles, self. Uh, and that is the ball sprite. And then the other is going to be the multi, right? We're iterating through this multi group, which is a group of sprites. So we're checking to see if the current ball self and the multi that I'm iterating through are colliding. And if so, we are going to multi.hit sound. And for right now, I'm gonna leave this commented because we have not implemented any sounds playing. And it's a bit annoying when you're developing and you have a bunch of sounds playing all the time. But then what I'm gonna do is I am going to get the actual multipliers uh, score and I'm going to increment whichever multiplier we got uh, and so you may have noticed this right here I have all of these values set to zero so at the beginning of the game basically I have not hit any multipliers but when I do I want to keep track of that because I'm going to print that out to the console that does give us an idea of the probability of each multiplier and things of that nature right so I'm just going to have multipliers and then I'm going to get the string multi dot multi amount. And I'm just going to increment that, which again, starts off at zero. So we'll just do plus equals one. And I'm also going to print this to the console because again, I find it interesting and it does help with debugging and things of that nature. Print F string total plays. And that will just be a sum of value for value in multipliers dot values and let's see if we got all of the parentheses and brackets right there and finally multipliers and that will just print the dictionary that has the number of hits per multiplier then I'm also gonna have my multi dot animate function called um, which I don't think we have defined just yet but that's just gonna take in multi dot color and the multi dot multi amount and finally I'm gonna set the boolean multi dot is animating to true which means that we need to go back over to the multi class and create a new function called animate and I did actually call hit sound as well which for now I have commented out but we do need to create a couple of functions. So one of my functions will be hit sound and it takes self as a parameter. And uh, I'm just gonna pass for now because we don't need to fill that out. What we do need to fill out 
is just below render multis we need to have def animate and that is going to take in self color and amount so we're going to check self.animated frames we're going to see if that's less than self.animation frames divided by two once the animation frames are halfway done we're basically going to reverse the direction of the rectangle so for right now um, basically, you know, this is going to be zero at first when the animation starts because this is basically just a counter. I'm going to move the rectangle downward. And so what that's going to do is when the ball collides, so, so this one, for example, the 0.2x here, when the ball collided with it, the ball basically disappears and this moves downward and then kind of snaps back up to where it was. So we're going to have an animation that is a certain number of frames that we calculated already and of course will vary based on your FPS. Um, but basically we're going to cut that in half and we're going to move downwards for the first half and then we're going to move back up the second half. So that is basically what I am filling out here in this animate function, right? So if we are less than halfway through the animation, what I'm going to do is self.rect.bottom is going to be plus equals two. And uh, since you know the, the Y values basically go from zero at the top down to 1080 at the bottom, right? It's an add, right? Even though you might think that it makes sense to subtract, it's actually adding two pixels uh, each frame or each tick rather each time this animate function runs. Um, and if that's not the case, we are that basically means that we're more than halfway through our animation right so then we can self dot rect dot bottom and this is where we actually do subtract because we want the y values uh, to to look we want them to actually go upward right so uh, that will be subtracting the y values we'll just do minus equals two uh, and we're going to basically add uh, one to our animated frames each time uh, we run through this right so self dot animated frames plus equals one so once this animation completes we'll basically have this statement true right if self dot animated frames is equal to self dot animation frames divided by two floor um, times two all right this is a little redundant but in any case we're going to set self dot is animating to false and we're going to reset our self.animated frames to zero. So I do need to create an update function, and that will just be def update self. And right here we're going to, actually we don't need a comment there, it's just a kind of a standard update function, but we are going to say if self.isAnimating, self.animate, self.color, and self dot multi amount. So let's see if that gives us enough logic to get the animation working. All right, and to test our collisions. Cool. So one thing you'll notice, uh, I think the animation looks great, but the ball just kind of like rolls over top. It doesn't slow down it doesn't disappear um, and it's kind of kind of weird uh, <laughs> the way that the game actually works is that the balls kind of just disappear and so we also run into a bug in our code and that's that if i keep pressing this we just keep adding sprites to that multi-group we're not actually deleting them uh, and really we should be removing them from memory um, once they collide, right? Because otherwise they're just gonna sit there forever until the game is closed. So there are a couple things that we can do to resolve that issue. And here's the nice little way of printing that you can see. Um, we do have a bug here as well. Let's actually see if we can figure out why. And yeah, actually this is because we're not removing the sprite, right? You may have noticed that in the last one where, you know, every frame that it's still colliding with the sprite this line is going to print. So we definitely do need to fix that. So back in the ball class, we can go back to the update function and basically add a bit of logic right here, self.kill, right? And that may seem like a harsh function name, but this is just built into the Pygame sprite 
class that we are inheriting from and that will get rid of it from memory right and i can actually just rerun this and demonstrate what happens uh, we had an issue before where we're having a collision that lasts multiple frames right but now as soon as it happens it disappears and if we go back to our print statement if you uh, were keeping uh, track there we basically played four times and so this number of lines uh, with a total plays of four is correct in what we would expect to see. It is now time to take a look at how we might implement this previous multi scroller on the right hand side which is actually pretty cool. What I want to do is actually pass a lot of the same information to a new class that basically does you know like a scrolling kind of animation on the right hand side. But by and large, we're still going to get the multiplier uh, amount, and then we're also going to get the RGB value, right? So we're kind of passing similar parameters into this previous multi. So I'm going to go back over to our kind of this collision logic right here, right? And I'm going to have a new section right here that says display previous multi on right side of screen. And what I'd like to do is set the previous RGB to multi.color because we're already getting this information here. Um, so we have everything that's available to us in each multi class. And you can kind of see what that stuff is right here, right? So we could call any of these things that get defined in the init function when we're iterating through this group. Um, so that makes it really convenient when we need to grab stuff like multi color, for example. So um, I'm also going to basically instantiate prev multi, which will be equal to prev multi, the class, and we have not actually created that just yet, but that is going to take in string multi dot multi amt, uh, similar to what we have gotten up here. Uh, and then I'm also going to send the prev RGB that we just captured. And finally, I can add that to a prev multi group. So prev multi group dot add prev multi. So obviously, this is not going to work very well thus far because we have not defined our prev multi class. Uh, but we are going to go ahead and do that. And we'll go back over to the multis file here. And uh, at this point, I think we can go ahead and create a new class underneath the update function from multi. And so that will go all the way back down to this indentation level. And I'll have a comment that says class for previous multiplier display on right side of screen. And that will just be class prev multi, which again will inherit from pygame.sprite.sprite. .sprite. And we'll have our init function def init self multi amount and our RGB tuple. And again, we have to do our super init. And uh, we are going to get another display surface object. So self dot display surface will be equal to pygame dot display dot get surface as usual. So we're going to have a section for our rectangle stuff, for lack of a better term. Uh, and that's going to get similar to, it's going to get a lot of the same stuff that multi does, to be honest. Because it is very similar, it's just animating in a different way. And the rectangle is a different size as well. Uh, but by and large, a lot of this might look familiar. Self.multi amount will be set to multi amount. We're going to have a font here, self.font equal to pygame.font.sysfont, none and 36. This is actually going to be a larger font. Uh, and then I'm going to have self.rect width set to our score rect, which is from settings. And uh, since these are squares, right, we can basically have them be. Um, the height and the width is going to be identical, but self.rect height will also be equal to score rect. So then we're going to actually create a surface self.prev surf equals pygame.surface. And that is going to be self rect width and self 
rect height. And again, we're going to have the pygame.source alpha, src alpha, as a parameter. And then our self.rgb will be equal to the input parameter rgb tuple. And at this point, we can draw our rectangle pygame.draw.rect, self.prevsurf, self.rgb for the color. And then we're going to have zero. 0 self dot rect width I can go ahead and make this height as well since they're the same thing and so I need to actually set the location self dot prev rect and we're gonna go ahead and set that to uh, I'm gonna paste this in because it's kind of a long line but I will explain it so we're gonna get the rectangle of our previous surface and then we're going to set the mid bottom to a specific location which I found to work well taking the width which is 1920 in this case and multiplying that by 0.85 right so it's basically 15% away from the far right hand side of the screen and then we're going to have the y value be our height divided by 2 but then we're going to subtract the size of our rectangle which again is uh, this times this since it's a square so basically um, pretty similar to the location that you see here all right so we're not going to have the first one be smack dab in the middle of the screen because if it was then basically it would start right here and so all four of these would go down so that's why we subtracted two of this square and so basically it starts up here which gives us kind of a nice centered look i think so we need a couple things for our animation and it's kind of similar to what we had in the multi class but the names are a little bit different self dot y traverse is going to be zero and self dot traveled is going to be zero and uh, again these are basically tracking uh, how many frames our animation is going to take and how long per frame we need to travel I'm also going to have a call to the render multi function in this class which is going to print the multiplier amount onto our rectangle when we create it so self.render multi and we'll go ahead and create that function really quick um, render multi only takes self as a parameter and uh, this is very similar to the one up here right to the point where I think I can get away with copying and pasting this but image needs to change to prev surf. And then at that point, I think we are good. But in our update function, we're going to basically have the animation take place because nothing else goes on in this previous multi. And so that's gonna look like this. Def update takes itself as a parameter. And we need a place where we remove this or call the kill function that is available to the Pygame sprite class. And uh, I basically determine where that is. If self.prevrect.bottom is greater than height minus score rect times two. And uh, that is at this value, 864 at 1080. Right, so when we start at zero again, and then we work our way down towards 1080, if the bottom of one of our previous multipliers um, has a value that is higher than 864, we're just gonna call self.kill. Uh, else, and this is where the animation is gonna take place, we will have an if statement, if self.traveled is less than self.y traverse, then, we will have our total distance set to score a rectangle. We will then have our distance per second set to 18,000. I will then get a distance per frame set to distance per second times delta time. And again, we get delta time way up here. And I can have a note that basically says 28 at DT equals 0 0.016 is the 60 FPS delta time. Then our divisor will be int score rectangle. 
divided by distance per frame. So we're basically trying to see how much we need to travel per frame, right? And uh, that basically will be distance per frame equals score rect divided by divisor. And finally, our self.prev rect.bottom will be increased by our distance per frame. We can then increment self.traveled plus equals int distance per frame. And once this is all said and done, we can simply self.display surface.blit, self.prev surf, and self.prev rect. Now, doing this calculation every frame is probably not ideal. Um, and I'm just realizing that now, but I think that it does allow us to achieve the desired effect. I know for a fact we would have to check to see if self.traveled is less than self.y traverse every time we are animating. But this stuff can probably be elsewhere. Possibly our init function, now that I think about it. But in any case, we will continue. So we are actually going to create a group. And that is going to be class prev multi group, which inherits from pygame.sprite.group. And you'll see why we're going to do this in a moment. But we are going to call our init function, which does nothing uh, except for our super init. And then we're going to just pass here because we don't actually need anything in the init function. But what we do want to do is actually modify our update function, def update. And uh, we will actually call, we, we want everything available to this update function. And we also want everything available to the update function within the prev multi class above, right? This right here. And in order to get access to both of those, we need to call super update as well. And so this is going to be really messy and I'm just going to copy and paste it in, but I will talk about what I'm doing here. But this basically helps us get the amount of frames or rather the, the distance that Y traverse needs to be set to for each of our previous multis. And so that is what this is right here. You can probably tell that it would be somewhat painful to do manually. But basically what we're going to do is if the length of this group is greater than five, and we'll use this as a visual. Right here you can see this is one, two, three, four, five. What's happening is that this one is going to basically get truncated once the Y value of this one is all the way down to the bottom, right? And so basically what we're saying is if the length of this group is greater than five, we're just going to remove the oldest uh, index, which is going to be index zero, right? And then if we only have one in here, basically the Y traverse, the amount that that previous multi needs to traverse is going to be equal to the size of the rectangle. Again, this is both height and width are this value right here, right? So our Y value, the amount that we need to actually move is going to be equal to the height of that rectangle. And again, since height times width are both score rect times score rect, um, basically we're saying we need to traverse this much on the Y axis. Conversely, if our length is two, then basically we're going to have our uh, sprite at index zero, that needs to traverse basically two times this. And then our sprite at index one needs to traverse just one times this. All right, so as we add sprites, you'll kind of see that this basically accounts for all of those, right? And so the oldest sprite that initially started only having to traverse the height of the rectangle now has to traverse five times the height of the rectangle. And then at that point, we will basically get rid of it because we will be adding another multi, right? And so that's kind of hard to understand without visualizing it. 
I think what I can do is prev multi group equals prev multi group. And uh, let's go ahead and give that a shot. So we do have an issue with line 79. And um, this should actually be prev surf dot blit. Let's give that a shot again. Nothing happening just yet. And I believe that's because we're not calling update on the previous multi group. So let's go back over to our board.py. And I need some logic here that basically says if the length of my list prev multi group is greater than zero, prev multi group dot update. Now let's give that a shot. Nice. Um, so I'm going to run this a couple more times. We're just going to take a look at what's going on. We actually are getting the multi. It does appear to be the right RGB value. And it does appear to be the right amount. Uh, it looks like we might. No, we're not going to hit 1,000, unfortunately. I did hit a 2x and another 2x and then back to 0 0.2. So this is functioning nicely. Um, the only issue that I see is that we have this nice rounded edge that we currently do not have in ours. Ours is a very sharp edge, unfortunately. And uh, I would like to fix that. So we need to basically add a mask. Uh, and so I'm going to do my best to describe this. Um, basically, what I would like to do is have like a, a rectangle that's kind of the same color as our background image. Um, and then basically makes a rectangle with a border radius similar to these you see the the multis have this kind of like smooth edge right so if i have kind of this color blue um, that's right around this and it has the uh, a similar border radius effect and um, basically just sits on top of this then we will get something that looks a little bit more like these multipliers down below. So how do we draw a previous multi mask? Well, we create a new function, of course. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that under our draw obstacles function. And I'm gonna put a note here that says used to give a border radius to previous multi display on the right side. And uh, that's just going to be def draw prev multi mask with self as the input parameter. We're going to create a surface, multi mask surface, which will be pygame.surface. And the size of it is going to be our width from settings divided by four. And then our height is just going to be height. And of course, this will again be pygame.source alpha. SRC alpha multi mask surface dot fill and that's just going to be our background color so the right side of board is going to be equal to width divided by 16 so I'm basically breaking up the board in 16 rectangles uh, and then I want 13 of them completely ignored. So I'm going to multiply this by 13. That means our starting position will be very far to the right of the board. Then I'm going to have right side pad set to right side of board divided by 130. So then I'm going to have a mask y variable set to height divided by 4 plus height divided by four divided by nine. And this is gonna give me my starting point. I'm actually gonna paste in this because it's quite significant. But basically we're drawing a rectangle, right? That is based on a multi-mask surface. 
it's going to use our right side pad and the mask Y. Um, and then the size is basically going to be the width of our rectangle and then the height of our rectangle times 4 with a border radius of 30. And then we're going to actually self.displaySurface.Blit the multi-mask surface on the right side of board and zero. And we want to draw this forever, right? Which basically means that uh, it needs to be in the update function. And I can do that right here. Self.drawPreV multi-mask. And so you won't notice that uh, at first, right? Because there are no previous multis. But let's just go ahead and drop one ball and I'm just gonna preemptively drop, I guess, five of them. But see, you see that rounded side to it. And it's actually really nice um, when you see all of them there. So we did get a 130 and now I can kind of spam this and you'll see it scroll. Um, but overall, yeah, this achieves the desired effect of the previous multi. So I do think it would be cool to actually have a play button on the left hand side of the screen. Right now it's a little bit boring. Um, and so within our board file uh, in the init function, I can basically have a section that goes right here. Uh, and what I'd like to do is just say play button. And we're gonna have a couple of different options for, one is gonna be basically when the play button is not pressed and the other is when it is pressed. So I'm going to have self.play up set to pygame.image.load graphics play 01.png and then of course convert alpha and I'll have a self.play down set to pygame.image.load graphics play 02.png and again convert alpha and then I'm going to have a boolean self.pressing play set to false. And um, self.play original width will be our self.play up.get width. We're going to actually scale this down because the image that I got from OpenAI uh, was actually a little large and I didn't feel like resizing it with Photoshop, although that probably would have been easier in retrospect. I'm also going to set self.play orig height to self.play up.get height. And here we're going to scale the play image by 50%. Self.play scaled width will be set to self.play original width divided by two floor value. Self.play scaled height will be self.play original height to and um, I'm just gonna copy and paste the rest of these in. This is not very interesting. I am just scaling the image and then creating the rectangle play rect, right? Um, what is a little bit more interesting is that I would like to have some logic in the update function that looks to see which one I should be drawing to the screen. And so I can do that by checking the self dot pressing play boolean. So if I am pressing play self.display surface dot blit self.scaled play down uh, and then we're going to draw that out our width floor 16 height floor 3 else self.display surface dot blit self dot scaled dot play up scaled underscore rather play up and uh, I'm going to place that shockingly at the exact same location I want to make sure that I have I do actually have the boolean right here uh, we'll actually have to update this when I am clicking the mouse right and that will be in an hour main.py. So we're going to modify this stuff a little bit here. I'm basically going to have elif event.type equals pygame.mouse button down. Uh, and if that happens, I do want to get the position of the mouse click. 
uh, which I can get with mouse pause equals pygame.mouse.getPause. And then what I'd like to do is check if the mouse click position collides with the image rectangle from the play button that I just created, right? If self.board.playrect.collide point mouse pause, what I would like to do is set the boolean self.board.pressing play to true. Otherwise, else self.board.pressing play will be false. So then I'm going to modify this logic here. Uh, I am going to put a comment first. It says spawn ball on left mouse button release. And so if I press the button down and my mouse is on the button, but then I move it away before releasing the button, then I'm not actually going to spawn the ball. I need the mouse pointer to be on the play button when the actual mouse button up happens as well because that to me signifies like I am committing to playing this ball here. And definitely that's something that you'd want when there's money involved. In this case, there's not money involved, but um, I do kind of like this mechanism to check that the player actually does want to play. We're going to check to see if the event type is pygame.mousebuttonup and the event button is one, which is the left mouse click and self.board.pressing play is true, right? And that basically means that the mouse pointer did collide with the play rectangle while the mouse button was down. We will also get the mouse pause set to pygame.mouse.getPause. And I need another if statement that says if self.board.playrect.collide point mouse pause. Then I will get my random X. Then I will get my ball spawned at random X. I'll add that to the ball group. And after this is said and done, I will self.board.pressing play. We'll set that back to false. And if the mouse cursor is no longer on the play button when the mouse button is released, we'll simply self.board.pressing play false. So let's see if that gives us our play button. And there we go. So I can click the button. Nothing happens. My mouse button is still down. And if I move the mouse off of the button, nothing happens because the mouse position is not colliding with the play button. Now, conversely, if I click down and then move the button and then move the mouse cursor on top of the button and then let go, nothing happens because I never set that boolean to pressing play to true. So what I have to do is actually press down while I have the mouse colliding with the rectangle and then let go of the mouse and there you go. So this is working as intended and we will go ahead and see our previous multi uh, which gives us that 0.2x and we see our mask is working just great. So we're getting pretty close. Um, I almost like some aspects of our game better, uh, which is a good sign. Now there are a few things that aren't occurring. Um, one you can't really tell in this image, but there are sounds that basically play during this game. They're very simple, but they give you kind of an audio cue when something happens, like when you get a multi. It'll play a sound, uh, and the higher the multi, the higher pitched, um, and I think even louder the sound that plays is. So we're going to go ahead and implement that. We're also going to implement like a very slight animation when an obstacle is hit and you can kind of see what that looks like it's basically like a a larger circle that kind of pulses around the obstacle and then the alpha value uh, which is basically just the transparency goes from somewhat opaque to fully transparent and then it disappears so we're going to go ahead and finish up by implementing those things and i think we'll be pretty much done so we're going to go back to the ball group and uh, we're going to do basically another very similar iteration through a different group. And uh, I'm going to have a comment right here that says check to see if ball hits obstacle. And again, the obstacles are the multitude of white circles that we have. 
they are pi monk bodies that are static, right? Um, so what we're going to do is, uh, since we've also given them rectangles, we can check to see if the ball is colliding uh, with the obstacle. And the way that we can do that is very similar to how we did it in the multi-group one below. But that's just going to be for obstacle in self.board.obstacle list. All right, so I need to actually change this to obstacle sprites. What I need to do is check if pygame.sprite.collide.rect self obstacle basically check to see if my ball and obstacle are colliding and in that case I will create animation and add to animation group so I will get my obstacle center X and obstacle center Y those will be obstacle dot rect dot center X and obstacle dot rect dot center Y and then my obstacle position will be set to obstacle center X and obstacle center Y. And then what I would like to do is another for loop for animating obstacle in animation group. If my obstacle position is equal to my animating obstacle chords, then I will get rid of that animating obstacle. And this basically prevents me from having a ball that hits an obstacle and then another ball hits it and we basically just have like stacking um, sprites or animations rather. We don't want to do that. We'll just remove the one that's currently animating and then we'll kind of start the animation over again. Um, but at this indentation level, I'm going to instantiate obstacle animation. And my parameters are going to be x, y, radius, color, and delta time. And I'm just doing this as kind of a reference. But basically, that's going to look like uh, the following two lines. I will have my obs and m equals animated obstacle which is going to again taking the above parameters obstacle center x obstacle center y 16 my color will be 255 255 255 which is white and finally self dot delta time and then I'll add that animation group dot add obs anim so, you'll notice that we instantiated this class right here, which should be in the obstacles.py file. Now, obstacles.py file, unfortunately, has quite a bit of work to do. So we're gonna jump right into that. I'm gonna from settings, import star, import pygame and pygame graphics draw. Then I'm gonna create my animation group which will be pygame.sprite.group. And we have seen this before. I will then declare my class obstacle, which inherits from pygame.sprite.sprite. I will have my init function, which takes in self, x, and y. Of course, I will super init. And for my obstacles, I basically just need to create rectangles, right? Um, so I know that my color is going to be white, but in any case, I do have obstacle color in settings. Self.color will be obstacle color. My self.radius will be my obstacle red. My self.posx and self.posy will be equal to x and y as the input parameters. Self.image will just be pygame.surface ball radius times two and ball radius times two. I think I could have just used the obstacle radius. I'm not really sure why I did it this way. In any case, we will again use pygame.src alpha as an input parameter. 
And finally, self.rect will be equal to self.image.getRect with a center value of self.pause underscore x and self.pause underscore y. And that should do it for our obstacle class. And now we need to create our animated obstacle, which will take in pygame.sprite.sprite .sprite once again. And we'll have our init function, which takes in quite a bit more parameters, self, x, y, radius, color, and delta time. We will then super in it and capture our display surface. Self.display surface will be pygame.display.get surface. We will have self.x and self.y equal to x and y. I will also have self.chords equal to self.x, self.y. Self.radius will be radius self.color will be color self.delta time of course is delta time and our self.rect will be pygame.rect and our x value minus the radius and our y value minus the radius and then we'll have a radius times 2 radius times 2 so then we need to calculate alpha value to decrement each frame. And this is for the animation. Again, we kind of start at a more opaque circle and then slowly, or actually very quickly, <laughs> decrease the alpha uh, so that it eventually becomes uh, invisible and then basically just disappears, right? So self.alpha will start at 125. Our self.fade speed second will be 250. That's how many alpha values I want to uh, change in one second, right? So basically it will become invisible. Uh, if we start at 255, it will become invisible in essentially one second. Self.fade speed frame will be set to self.fade speed second time self.delta time. And then we'll get the self.divisor int self.fade speed second divided by self.fade speed frame. And uh, then we'll get our self.fade speed frame set to self.alpha divided by self dot divisor so then we will do something very similar calculate radius value to decrement each frame because we're also going to shrink the animated circle right and that'll just be self dot radius second and that will be it's going to basically subtract okay that's why we did ball radius times two because this is actually going to be larger than the obstacle so we'll start that at 32 because that's how much we basically want this thing to shrink in a one second period, right? So then we'll have self.radius deck frame equal to self.radius deck second times self.delta time. And that will give us the amount that we want to decrement per frame, which we will then use to get a self.divisor radius. And that will be equal to self dot radius deck second divided by self dot radius deck frame. And finally, self dot radius deck frame will be equal to self dot radius deck second divided by self dot divisor rad. Uh, so yeah, uh, now we basically need a function that will fade and then a function that updates and draws. And so we can do a def fade which takes in self and delta time and there we'll have self dot alpha minus equals our integer self dot fade speed frame and that's how much we want this to fade per frame and uh, we'll have if self dot radius is greater than zero we want that to self dot radius minus equal self dot radius decrement per frame and then we're going to basically say if self.alpha is less than 50 or self.radius is less than 2, we're just going to self.kill because at that point we'll just have it disappear. 
So in the update function, def update self, we'll have self.fade, which then takes self.delta time, and finally self.draw, self.display surface is where we actually draw to, which means the last function here will simply be def draw self surface. And I'm going to copy and paste this in because it is not very different than any other draw function that you would see. But basically we're creating a surface. We're then using graphics draw, which allows us to control the alpha value. So we see our red, green, blue values, and then our fourth, uh, or rather index three, is our alpha value, right? And so we don't always get to pass the alpha value, but we are able to with graphics draw. And then I will blit that to our display surface. And with a little luck, that should give us our animation. So let's call this and see what happens. So no animation yet. And I think that is because we're not actually doing anything with the animation group, which then is something that we need to add to the update function in board.py. And we'll just do that right here because it's very similar. If len list animation group greater than zero, we will animation group dot update. So let's go ahead and check that again. And still nothing. And that might be because we're not adding anything to the animation group at any point. So we need to go back to where we're looking for collisions. And I believe it is right in this section here in ball.py. So we need to basically add something uh, to the animation group. Actually, this is misspelled. And I realize the issue is that I don't think we have our rectangle being created when we spawn our obstacles. So we'll go back over to board.py. Recall that I had this commented out in the spawn obstacles function. And uh, this is where I basically need to uncomment. So we will create a new obstacle, um, which will basically be position, body position X, body position Y. And then I'm also going to add that to our obstacle sprites. And uh, of course, I need add here. And I think that that should do it. So in obstacles.py, I didn't actually spell the word radius fully. So let's check that obstacles.py. Line 24, there we go. Let's try that again. Animating obstacle cords is not defined. This actually needs to access cords within the obstacle, so I need a period there. Try that again. And there we go, the animation actually works this time. So if I spam the ball, or rather, if I spam the play button, you kind of see this cool little animation that occurs every single time the ball collides with an object. And I think that looks pretty good. So finally, we're going to add a little bit of sound, and I think we will call this done. So I'm going to uncomment multi.hitsound, which basically means that we need to go back here and uh, I think we need to modify that hit sound function. Now I'm going to copy and paste this in because it's not very interesting and it is quite a few lines of code. Uh, but here where we currently have pass, what I have now is basically a few if statements that basically check the value of the amount. So depending on the value of amount, um, the pitch is going to be different, which means I have different sounds 
that I need to declare um, within settings.py. So if we go back over to settings.py, you'll notice that I'm doing this here. And I'm setting the volume accordingly because I actually want like the 0.2x to be a lot quieter than the 1000x, which I think makes sense. Um, but I think that is good enough for our multis to play a sound. And let's go ahead and take a look. Of course, I misspelled the function name. There should not be an E here. Let's try that again. All right, and it's very simple, um, but you can tell that it makes a different pitch depending on which multiplayer I got. So these sound effects are very basic. Feel free to make them a little bit more advanced if you would like, but you basically see what happens is that we call the hit sound function depending on the multiplier and it will play a different sound according to what is in settings.py. And finally, if we go to main.py, we can add a similar sound every time we play a ball. And it's kind of like a mouse click sound. It's not very advanced at all. But what I can do is just add that here. Once I generate my random X, then I can basically just click play. And so click play is found in our settings.py and the same line. So this does load an mp3, click.mp3. So there you have it, a working Plinko clone. Uh, I just wanted to basically recap all the things that we did. Um, I probably won't get all of them in this little summary, but we did have a, a pretty interesting nested for loop to basically change the location of our X and Y coordinates to draw our board. Um, we then implemented a physics engine in PyMonk, which is pretty cool. Uh, we set these multipliers and uh, then the obviously the previous multiplier scroller on the right hand side as well with the mask giving it the nice little border radius look that our multis have. We have some frame rate agnostic animations going on. We have our play button with some interesting logic that kind of determines whether or not we should play a ball based on the collision of the mouse and the rectangle that it's based on. And all in all, this is a really fun project that uh, I think was a great learning experience. So if you uh, hung around until the very end, I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.